Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Well, hello. Poor little Mrs. Doubtfire there. Everybody get your groove on. Oh, look at all those weather reports. It's bright and cool in Kent. Um, I got to admit, I, I think Kent's probably cool all the time, if you know that. Uh, ah. seems, like, seems like spring in Wisconsin. Uh, rainy central Florida. Some uh, mixed bag of weather around, around the, the zones here today, gang. Oh, oh, surprise. Brent says it's beautiful in Arizona. Yeah, it's always beautiful. <laughs> it's the shock uh, of the day. It's the shock of the day. We're... Who'd have guessed it? Who'd have guessed it? Yeah, yeah. Who would have thunk it even once? Um, speaking of weather, folks, we have, um, we have Jim Goodell joining us here today. Um, and he's got weather in his neighborhood. He's going <laughs> to... I don't know if we can see out the window. We're all squinting okay. to see out the window. Right. Oh, it's not, oh, yeah, it's not quite there yet. There it is. Yeah, there we I'm go. I'm also, yeah, the, the hurricane hasn't arrived yet, but it's it's on its way. I'm yeah. in Orlando today. Yeah, so Jim's joining us from Orlando. You've got a, you got a little souvenir of your visit there that you were going to. Boom. Who's Learning. anybody Anybody at Learning 2022 listening in right now? Pop yourself in the chat and say, hey, I'm there too. Mm-hmm. We could have had you join Jim for a coffee. Yeah. In today's session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim. Um, while we're finding out if anybody else is there in the same building as you and embracing for uh, for hurricane weather, um, tell us, uh, tell our tell our other guests in the audience here today a little bit about yourself. Hey, yeah, I'm uh, Jim Goodell from QIP, my current company. I'm also the chair of the IEEE Learning Technology Standards Committee, the standards group that brings you XAPI. Hmm. And um, I, my, my very first job was in instructional design um, and computer-based course. We're at Digital Equipment Corporation, so I'm dating myself. And then did a lot of things in between, um, but now I'm back um, into this corporate Training and mm-hmm. development community. Very cool. Um, and I think Brent's got a, another souvenir to just show quickly too. Um, and that this is, is why he's here today. This is what we're talking about here today. Mm. Jim's book, The Learning Engineer Toolkit. And I, I should mention that I am one of twenty nine authors. It was a big collaborative project. Excellent. It, except it's not one of those books where 29 separate authors create chapters and they're just bound together. It was a real collaborative effort with some, some great experts in, in many different disciplines that are required for learning engineering. Very, very cool. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah. The, the, I could tell it was edited because it wasn't like that, right? You, there's definitely a flow to the whole uh, thing and where each of the, the pieces of the puzzle are dropped in. It's, It's very well done. Thank you. Very neat. And the subtitle leads with the phrase that we love to have here, evidence based. (laughs) Uh, well let me just tell you that at the end of each of those chapters there is a lot of footnotes and um uh, citations references citations that's the word i'm looking for yes a lot of those so if all if you guys question anything that's in the book everything is cited (laughs) it's very academic and uh so yeah but but it's not written like an academic book we really wanted to make it. Um, no, it, it's very style. consumable. Yeah, that's the thing that's nice about it. It's heavy like a textbook, and it has all the <laughs> citations like a textbook, but it does not read like a textbook, which is nice. It's really nice. That was that, the goal. That feels like a variation of the walks like a duck, talks like a duck, but, but it turns out <laughs> it isn't, this isn't a duck. So, uh, yeah. Um, it's a goose. <laughs> woo. Um, 
Jim, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the planning and, and, you know, the idea behind the book, where, where it all started. Let's start, let's start with there. What, what did you look at and say, hey, we need another book? First, it started about four years ago, and I was getting involved in a group called Icicle, and it's part of IEEE, the Industry oh, yeah. Connections, Industry um, Council on Learning Engineering. <clears throat> and uh, this group was getting together to kind of figure out this thing called learning engineering that the term was coined over 50 years ago, but um, not much has been done with it over that time at least uh, at scale, <clears throat> I was involved in that group and I was curious about it and I knew that the roots of learning engineering was at Carnegie Mellon University. So I took a couple of vacation days and flew down there and talked with people from Carnegie Mellon University and some off offshoot businesses like Duolingo, you've probably heard of them, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, that are doing learning engineering. And, and some others, and learned some things about how multidisciplinary good learning engineering was. And then I um, got in touch with a whole bunch of people that are doing learning engineering or are experts in the different disciplines. And um, that's how it started, and we started writing the book. Very cool. Um, and we, had, um, we did have a discussion um, Oh my gosh, two years ago now, three years ago, Brent, wasn't it about the idea of learning engineering as they, the IEEE was starting to look at, at you know, into defining it? And, I, and yeah, so, I yeah, yeah. think we did. I don't know if it was, was it Craig Wiggins? It that was, yep, 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm just realizing how long ago it's been since, you know, since we've actually, you know, focused a bit on that, on the, on the phrase of the idea of, of uh, learning engineering. Yeah. Um, well, at that time, learning engineering w wasn't really formally defined, and now we have a formal definition. Oh, very cool. So, so I'll, I'll give you that. Learning engineering yeah, yeah. is a process and a practice that applies the learning sciences using human-centered engineering design methodologies and data-informed decision-making to support learners in their development. Nice. So there's a, a cool. lot to it <laughs> and and what we've found is that it's not about a learning engineer as much as about a process of doing learning engineering so you can be an instructional designer and do learning engineering you can also be an instructional designer and do something that doesn't really cap fall into the category of learning engineering I th you've so you've hit on that that magical term that you have an image for that might help people get a better idea of that. So um, sure. let's, go and, let's go ahead and share your screen. The, the, the learning engineering process, uh, we'll just jump right into it and start, uh, start digging it apart here. Okay, are you seeing my screen? Yep, yep. we are indeed. All right. And there it is. Ooh, all right. And so, the, it always starts in the middle with the challenge, understanding the opportunity to, to improve learning. And challenges always exist in context. So we have learners with different background knowledge and different circumstances, different learning environments. And we have teams that have different levels of expertise and we have other resource constraints. So once we define the challenge, um, the next place we go depends on what the challenge is. We may need to do some more investigation. Um, but so I, yeah, let me just jump in here and interrupt you right uh, right off sure. the bat. This is a fantastic screen for many reasons because I think a lot of our conversations have a tendency to skip this and go right straight to talking about instructional design processes. And when I, mm -hmm. and also I'll say, on the interwebs, the social medias and everything, when I hear people complain about, uh, you know, not getting to do the type of work that they'd like to do, not getting to be able to build the types of things that they get to build, or they see somebody else's work and think, why did they do that? Why That's, you know, for some reason they look at it and think it's bad or it's not well done or it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that. And I like to remind folks that there's that context, right? That every single one of us sits inside of a world 
that may not have the same context as you. They may not have that ability to create the same sorts of things that you have the ability to create. So, so I, this this really resonates with me, and I I appreciate the team for building this into the, the learning engineering definition. Yes, and you'll also notice that data is a part of every stage of the process. And that's why Duncan's here, because <laughs> yeah. he's a learning engineer. XAPI guy. Hey, Duncan, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Was there more to that process? So, well, I guess I'll talk through the process. So um, the the creation stage is not is also iterative so it's not just you um, design something then hand it off to developers you're working as a team and it's a human-centered design process so we want to get prototypes and drafts in front of real users as soon as possible and collect some data and iterate on the designs even before they're out in the wild um, and then when they are out in the wild, there is an implementation phase that we're collecting data. We've already instrumented the data. We know how we're going to use tools like XAPI to collect the data and then um, analyze that data to inform the next version or the next cycle. And that's a, a mindset shift from, well, I'm going to do this project and when I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> And that's a mindset shift for customers and um, learning and development teams. And it hopefully we're moving to a world where organizations are changing their thinking and changing their budgeting for projects so that um, they don't um, settle for the first shift of something. Mm hmm. It's like uh, we, we sometimes talk about the you know the the design of a project um, you know whether we call it a storyboard or whatever as a as a blueprint but the budget's also got to include ongoing maintenance and um, yes and other you know other costs uh, you know over a period of time it's not merely the construction of a house it's then how do we keep it livable how do we keep it uh, you know uh, how do we keep uh, improving on it so very cool. Yeah, it's almost like you took a whole bunch of really smart people and brought them together <laughs> and took all the all the best things of the last 50 years and said, what you know, how do we build something that's that is actually the work that we should be doing for folks? And this, exactly. And there there was I, I had to learn a, a lot of things myself during this process. So um one thing I I knew I wanted to write like Malcolm Gladwell, but I wasn't there yet. So <laughs> I did a lot of practice and iteration and got feedback from people. So I think the introduction is um, Malcolm Gladwell esque in that it's um, very consumable and understandable and explains some technical things in ways that anyone can understand. Mm. Um, and then we have the foundational chapters that explain. Um, kind of what you need to know at, at a high level about learning science, about data analytics, about data instrumentation, about engineering, about human-centered design, and about the learning engineering process. And then the back of the book is a set of practical tools that you can use mm. to actually do the work. Does... Um... I know Icicle's been around for a long time, IEEE, the work that they do and everything. Are there any um, like significant case studies or anything at this point yet of people or departments saying, we're going we're gonna to adopt this wholeheartedly. We're going to go all in and take all of our processes and try to figure out how we take all of this work that we've done inside our organization and start weaving it into this type of process and of course training our whole team on it and all that kind of stuff is that has that happened yet or are we still too early yes so there's some uh, stories in the book about how organizations i already mentioned duolingo and the u.s military and um age of learning is a company that produces products for um, early learning and um, 
other other organizations like that. Very awesome. cool. Um, as you were working through, you know, putting the book together, etc. Um, were, were there any places where you went, oh, well, that's interesting, or hmm, I didn't expect that. Little surprises for yourself along the way as part of the process. Um, data analytics, learning analytics is. Uh, I discovered some things about um, what kinds of algorithms are available for doing inferences about learners. So, oh. like being a predictive analytics. So, um, being able to look at a an activity stream for a learner and predict whether they're going to do uh, be able to solve the problem that they're presented next, and also detecting things about the learning experience. So, is the learner engaged or not engaged? Is the learner just trying to game the system to get through a compliance exercise? Or are they actually, yes, <laughs> clicking through? And some systems are intelligent tutoring systems that offer hints. And are they using the hints just to get through or are they using the hints to actually learn what they're supposed to be learning? <laughs> the, the 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 image that always comes to my mind when oh, gaming the system is the, the episode of Simpsons where Homer um, ends up having to work from home and and he has the one job initiate uh, I don't know emergency measures or something and, <laughs> and and it's yes or no and so he gets up one of those drinking birds and he and he puts it on top of it. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's poking the Y the the, 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 the N key right. <laughs> and at some point, of course, it, it being the Simpsons, things don't work out the way that Homer planned. But I always think of the drinking bird clicking the keyboard as as something that yes. just so many people, I mean, whether it's, you know, just clicking the forward, getting through. Uh, I'm not going to lie, we've, we've, um, we've had requests at times for, from people who want to make sure that, uh, oh, well, in the audio narration on that page ends, can it just forward on to the next page? Because our learners don't like to actually pay it. <laughs> they want to, yeah, anyway. Oh my gosh, so many cans of worms that we could talk about here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't want our users to actually have to click a next button. So let's just automate the whole dang oh, thing. <laughs> yeah, so they can walk away and not even be there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so we have, few, we have a few questions um, in the chat, and one of them, and I'm sure we'll we'll add it later. But one of them is, hey, where do people find the book? So do we have a, um, if we've okay. got a link, uh, we can throw that in the chat so that uh, that folks can find that. Um, and um, yeah, so so I I don't have the link handy, but um, if you go to the Routledge website, the Routledge is the publisher, okay. and search for learning engineering or maybe learning engineering Goodell, it will come up. Um, same thing on Amazon, it should come up. If so we're all doing we're all doing anything. that. Uh, <laughs> all, yeah, and, yeah, I got you. That's a that's a good one. It's uh, an an easy place to look, unless that was your publisher uh, looking for a quick. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. Someone put it in the chat there. <laughs> oh, there someone found it in the chat. Awesome, great. Excellent. I, it. I was Thank doing the folks. typing in the back. Yep, yep, yep. Oh boy, here well here's another question. Uh how is a learning engineer different from a learning architect? Um I don't know that I know the answer to that because I don't know your definition of learning architect, but like I said earlier, it's more about the process. So um there there are cases where there are learning engineering consultants that call themselves learning engineers and maybe they have the expertise in all of those areas learning science data science, engineering, uh, uh, human-centered design, but it's very rare. They're unicorns. Um, there's, there's also um, some of these consultants might be brought into a team to just kind of coordinate communication between the different disciplines. But what we find is probably the more promising model and the more practical model is that you, you're bringing together a team of experts and um, those those team of experts have expertise in different domains, but they've learned enough about each other's domains 
and learned enough about the engineering learning engineering process so that they can have conversations because some of those domains use the same words to mean different things. <laughs> so people will be just talking past each other. Oh, we've like, never experienced that, have we, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> no. like assessment, for example. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I you know, um, it, it, this got me thinking about what IEEE really is. And from from my early understanding of when Icicle was first formed and everything, it was, um, there were a lot of conversations about, um, is our profession really a legitimate profession? And my, uh, my understanding was, is that this was, this was one of the attempts, or this is the attempt to solidify a definition through a standards board that's as as prominent and as important as IEEE to be able to say, this is the work that is done in our domain. There is a name for it, and we and it has been now approved and stamped, and everybody agrees that this is you know, the thing, and we are now legit. Am I, am I off? Am I off? That's, base no, that? that's exactly right. Because <laughs> three or four years ago, there was a lot of argument about what is learning engineering. Yeah. And so the group that was brought together with an icicle, um, were um, kind of cross domain group. There was some people from corporate training world and, and some of the top leaders in the academic space, um, around some of these disciplines and there was general agreement that this definition had the key ingredients i would think um there's maybe one word that we kind of argued about whether it should go in um and that is iterative it's an iterative process so i think there's general agreement that it needs to be iterative even though that word is not in the definition and the i guess the other part that we the icicle community has agreed to is that it is a team sport that it's generally something done by multiple people with that shared understanding and um, as humans as a human centered process often the stakeholders and learners are considered part of the team and they're brought in to be part of the process so what would you say to folks who are uh, one one person training teams? Okay. I mean, I know this Could is you hold on one second. I'm I have <laughs> housekeeping wanting to. Oh, that always happens in a hotel. <laughs> uh, Where's my on hold music? OK, sorry about that. <laughs> you can't clean my room yet. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm still rooming, dang it. Yes. Right. I don't. I. I don't want to. I don't want folks in the um in the chat who may be hearing about this for the very first time, uh, and they're instructional designers, and maybe they're brand new instructional designers, or maybe they've been an instructional designer for years, and now they're feeling like, well, isn't what I do legit? Isn't instructional? Isn't me being an instructional designer? I mean, I have a job. I do instructional design. How you know? How yes. Does this, how does this IEEE standard thing called a learning engineer? So what do I have to go back to school now? Do I, you know, like now what? Not necessarily. And remember, it's a process. So, um, and it's a process that doesn't isn't inventing new stuff. So, learning engineering uses human centered design techniques that were already established by fields of human centered design. Um, it, it uses instructional design. It uses data science. And it, 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 it's really just bringing these disciplines together. So you can be an instructional designer. You don't necessarily need to learn how to do data science and do data analytics. Um, but you can be part of a team. I, I think there probably is some learning for everyone. The data scientists need to learn something about instructional design. Instructional designers need to at least be able to have a conversation about data. And so, but, but I think that's part of why learning engineering is needed 
is that we're in this broader context where everyone needs to be a lifelong learner because the world is changing so quickly. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, that's one of the, I would describe it, the joys or the cool things about what we do is that we're, what we always are learning, right? Every time yes. uh, we, 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 what we do is not carved in stone. It is, um, it needs to be always malleable and, and shapeable. And, and, and that's a part of our responsibility is, is just simply learning so we can be better, so we can make better decisions, we can make better learning experiences, all of those critical things. Um, and, uh, and I don't think there's any, many of us who are in this field who aren't curious and, you know, by nature too, we, we do like learning things. That's part of the personality profile, I think, of many of us in this field. Um, I see in the chat, someone said, uh, uh... Tushar said, ISDs are expected nowadays to look, to know everything, design courses, implement technology and data analysis. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that. If, mm. if we move to a model where we have um, expert teams working together, we, we can rely on the expertise of others. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing just because there is so many of the folks that do the work that of instructional designers or just e-learning developers and whatnot they're they're one person teams we've we've done mm -hmm. a couple shows about you know the one man band training department right or small companies that are building training for their employees and they don't they can't afford to pay a, a big team of all of these experts to do you know learning engineering and i, I think that that was that was that's why that comment, I wanted to be clear for everybody that this is a process. And Amy Parent asked the same questions and she says it, it, it's, a, it's a big, it's a big aha moment, I think, for a lot of folks to realize they don't sweat it. <laughs> this isn't, yeah. this isn't like mandating that you change your career and that this is a crazy sort of thing. This is, it's a, it is, it's a process. It's a, it's a new way of looking at the work in its I guess you could say it's um, it's ideal, right? Like in a, it, this is ideally, you should be able to fill all of these roles and have a big team. But I suppose it's like a contractor, for example, that does not hire all the different disciplines that are extras. He maybe also has some skills in some of those areas and decides to build himself a little house. And he's able to go mm -hmm. ahead and do that all by himself, right? I, I think. Yeah. It's kind of like that. And I think we're entering a new economy, the intelligence augmentation economy, where we have teams of people um, working together with teams of AI agents. So I, I see some tools being developed already to help people do data instrumentation without writing a line of code hmm. and um, tools for making inferences about that data without writing a line of code. And um, and we're in a gig economy. So if you're a one person shop and you need a little bit of um, data science expertise for a project, you can buy a little bit of that um, expertise <laughs> for a project. Uh, but but you can also learn yourself, which I needed to do for this book. I didn't know a whole lot about learning analytics. So I went to University of Pennsylvania um, and Ryan Baker has this massive open online textbook. It's kind of free. Oh, wow. um, it's a good intro to learning analytics. I, I'll, Everybody I'll goes right can... straight to the Google for that one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you listening to this podcast later, and you're if you're driving, uh, don't Google. But uh, we'll see yes. if we can get a link in here for everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, it, it, I think that's one of the things that struck me as I was thumbing through the book. I, I've had it for a while now. I have not had a chance to do a full, you know, cover to cover on it. But um, I have sat down a few times because I've had it sitting on my desk. It does, and it it's it's exceptionally comprehensive. It, it, like every time I would think to myself, "Well, I wonder if they thought about this," you know, and I'd go in, "Oh, there it is," you know, and wow, there. They've covered it more deeply than I have even thought about it myself. So, yeah, I would, um, you know, I'm not just saying this because you're a guest on our show or anything. <laughs> but, you know, I, I would tell people, you know, if you got enough money to buy one book this year, buy this one. 
because it's it's got the whole thing in it you know everything you need to know you know is it it's a it's a good introduction to all of those things and how they fit into that great big I don't want to use the overhyped word ecosystem, but the, the whole mm -hmm. thing that is the work that we do, you know, and, and all the different elements of it and the aspects of it. We we have a tendency to to pick and choose pockets, right, that are included in learning engineering. And then we focus heavily on just that at the expense of ignoring all the rest around it. I just I, I love the idea of if everybody can just level set on what that context is and ex and accept the whole process and all of those things, then when we do have those little pockets of conversation and have some focus, we're, we're at least all starting on the same level playing field of understanding. And then we can all dive in together more deeply. I mean, I don't expect our whole industry to get there together anytime soon, but I'm hoping it's a process. That also is a process. That also yeah. is a process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So they, they, I have to give. I, go ahead, Jay. I, I have. Go ahead. I just want to give credit to the twenty-eight other authors of the book, um, and people like Janet Kalodner, who helped me edit the book, who is um, a was a pioneer in the field of learning sciences, and uh, oh. people like um, Say Schatz, who was the director of the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative at the Department of Defense recently, that um, helped. Um, compile and design the, the book. Some of the graphics uh, are just amazing. And um, kudos to say for that. And and the other authors just are experts in their field and just did a great yeah. job of everything from the, the data analytics to the um, the ethics of learning engineering. Hmm. And that's you can see something that, that that's a topic area that we, we don't actually touch on a, a very Often, although it's implicit in a lot of the things that we do talk about, but you know, just the ethics alone of, of what we do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and you that, can that's join, a great these, point. join these folks in in the icicle community. I'll put the ICCICICLE.org is the site for the to, to uh, participate in icicle. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Cool. It's uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a great group of folks, by the way. Um, I I think I sat in on a couple of the live meeting conversations in in its early stages, uh, when it was first coming together. I haven't joined in a while, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff. Boy, I'm trying to catch up on uh, Thomas's chat here. And by the way, shout out to Thomas. Haven't heard from you in a while, my friend. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome to the chat. Mm -hmm. um, the the we've, we've talked about that, and you showed us the graphic of of, of the model that it's a, you know it's a, a different kind of a process, and of course, obviously, it's got some overlaps with you know other process models that we've got. There's some you know echoes of Addy in it, but maybe some different curves and yes. the arrows and and those sorts of things. Um, one of the challenges, though, you know, and I think it's been it's not been mentioned out loud by anybody, but I think it's also slightly reflected in that sense of well, does does this mean my role has to change. Um, but um, any tips for people who want to take this then and start bringing it into their organization? Best, you know, good ideas to help convince people that this is a way to go. or Because change in an organization can always be uh, a challenge too. Just, uh, you know, getting the cobwebs out and putting something new in isn't always uh, an easy thing. I'd say look for the low hanging fruit. But um, the first, probably the first thing is can you build one more iteration into instead of one and done? Um, can you use data in some new way? Uh, that's probably a good place to start. Better understand the context. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that context is is good, and I, I think to to kind of extend what I think you're saying. I mean, even if you just if you're if you're still building what you're building, building courses, e-learning courses, which is still great. A lot of organizations, that's where they're at. And we need to work inside that context and work with what we've got. But when you push it out to your to your learners, to your to internal customers, whomever they may be, get some feedback from them. And if they, you know, tell you something about the course or if everybody's missing something or you know review the assessment review the test data and look at it and and then go back and update it and redo it you know make that cycle more prevalent within your organization 
other than just waiting for it to break and then updating it or waiting for the content to be old and somebody going, this is old, let's update it. You know, those, that's the old way of doing things. We should be more proactive in the efforts that we take. I see that Amy put into the chat, try just as part of the process, like using a persona or multiple personas to uh, kind of uh, get the team to a common understanding of the kinds of learners that you're trying to serve. Mm -hmm. And I think at the center of your diagram where, where you have um, the word the challenge, challenge um, if we think about maybe a variation of that word too, sometimes it's a bit easier to help um, others in our organization understand it. You know, what's the problem that's being solved? Um, because problem uh, maybe connotes, uh, you know, some impacts in, in a different word yes. than just the word. Mm -hmm. Challenge sounds almost optional, but if we're talking to our colleagues, well, what's the problem? Well, this or that. Well, uh, if we were in another space and the building was being built crooked, we'd, we'd buy new levels, right? Or whatever. Um, so what's the problem? And, and then that can lead to conversations about adding other strengths, such as a, a data analytics you know, consultant component, if, if that can be part of you know, demonstrating uh, you know, uh, that, the, that we have a, a way to solve the problem that works to the organization's benefit, saves money, reduces risks, lowers costs, all of those you know, core, core things that we're always trying to improve efficiency. Um, all of those things that we're trying to do, thinking about framing this new process as, as a way of um, maybe helping address a problem and, and then therefore giving us a chance to think about those other things that we need to add in to what we're already doing. That's insightful, Chris. Uh, in the earlier version of this model, we had the word problem there, and then some working on it felt that problem was too negative. But mm. I, I, I see your point. It It, it does especially in the corporate learning space, if you can tie the problem that you're solving to um, bottom line metrics and what outcomes for the business right. you're going to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and in the model itself, I, I, I like the word challenge because it is pro, it, it is a more positive word. And I think it, it resonates for you know you know for me in that way, but maybe we have to use a slightly different word if we're talking to, you know, the accounting yes. department, you know, or or the, or the our you know our upper management who need to understand, um, you know, who think about value or the word value, for instance, in a different way. Yeah. yeah. With our with a few minutes left here, um, Jessica is asking: Is there a framework to figuring out the challenge or the problem? Is that like I mean, obviously that's the uh, the the context part is just the beginning, right? It's just, it's setting the stage. So a, as people start to learn more about learning engineering, will they be drilling into it and seeing more of that on the website and in the presentations and whatnot? There's actually an entire chapter of mm -hmm. tools for <laughs> tools for understanding the challenge. And uh, so it, with, with some tools like root cause analysis and um, some others like that. And, uh, Hopefully, over time, we'll be able to um, iterate on, get some feedback with people actually using those tools and um, figure out what tools in addition are needed and, and put them on the website and such. Oh, very cool. That, 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 that was always going to prompt me, uh, and I'll, I'll throw it in anyway, slightly facetiously. So what's your plan for, uh, for evaluating the book and, and iterating it over time? But uh, <laughs> yes. I'll get you to it. Yeah, very good. Very good. It's already there. It's part of the process, isn't it? <laughs> it is part of the process. Nice. Oh, man. So, and on that idea of feedback in the, in the book, there's... Uh, there's an email that uh, that I check occasionally, learning.engineering.toolkit at Gmail. And I'm hoping that people that read the book will um, send me feedback. And then we can I can take it back to the my co-authors and we can figure out how to make a next version of the book or other tools available um, to help raise all boats and help everyone do their job better. Yeah, let me uh, let, let me just add on to that too because I, I think maybe I might have made this sound you know people are they're used to academic textbooks uh, you know you can I think a lot of people will immediately think to themselves dry 
uh, a lot of theory, but not a lot of, you know, practical stuff for the work that I do. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So don't let me scare you away or us scare you away by calling it big textbook. And when I say comprehensive, I mean comprehensive in the sense that it's got the theory, but it's also got the practical stuff and the tools and the how to and how to apply it and whatnot. And it's all based on proven methods in all of these areas outside of the work that we do that's being applied. So um, it, it's fantastic. And uh, so, yeah, I would I would highly encourage folks to take a look and, and covering things like ethics, too. Like, you know, well, I don't even think we've done an episode on ethics. Maybe that's something we should Ethics in learning. Hmm. I'm taking in a, a note while. Uh... <laughs> well, Jordan, who wrote that chapter, um, I'm, I can connect you with him, and, uh, and he, he's connected in that space. So awesome. Make that connection. Well, it's about that time. Whoa. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, the there music. it is. Sort of floating in and <laughs> Don't drop out yet. Yeah. Just yeah, yet, music. Yeah. Um, Jim, before we wrap up here, drop your contact info um, and then any other details that you want to share into the chat in case people want to you know, connect with you in some of the uh, various places that we do this kind of thing. Um, folks, as always, don't forget uh, what we do here on Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is sponsored by Domino Learning Systems. Um, we do make a, a a pretty good authoring tool if I don't if I do say so myself um, so that's if that's a thing that might be of assistance to your team don't uh, hesitate to check us out drop the link in the chat there or this is a big green button at the bottom there uh, as well um, yeah Jim thanks so much this has been a fascinating conversation thanks Jim I'm, thank I'm you waiting, I'm waiting to get my hands on the book uh, and digging in and uh, looking forward to, to finding you know, finding new avenues to learn for myself. Good times, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Let's dance on out.